This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. This is the show where we talk about wrestlers, people around wrestling, indie wrestling, and the like, and the love of wrestling. Yay. Uh, <laughs> we're here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And of course, you can check everything out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including this show. Indie Mayhem Show is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. And I encourage you to like and subscribe to both the YouTube and Facebook for Wrestling Mayhem Show, because you never know. The Indie Mayhem Show, of course, pops up about any time with interviews over on Facebook. And of course, we have plenty of shows and uh, show recaps happening over on the YouTube live page. As well, you can drop a line to 412-206-WMS0 or goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, of course, please, we encourage you to subscribe to, or I'm sorry, to support us via the Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Thank you so much to those of you that are showing your support there. Or just share the show if you like the conversations we're having. Share it on Twitter, whatever social media platform or wrestling, pro wrestling, indie wrestling group you may be a part of uh, if you think other people are going to like this conversation as well uh hey with me i got a special uh co-host for today chad the shad is hanging out we're after the wrestling mayhem show and then he just he's just chilling hello i have a lovely background on the tv behind because i realized the 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 feedback isn't coming back through so just the, just that's just the starry night story this is a starry night here yep. in mayhem studios here but our guest of honor this uh episode of course is joe dombrowski returning to the show how you doing sir I'm doing well. It's been a, a really hectic few weeks, but it's all positive. I'm really happy to be here, and I appreciate you giving me the platform. Absolutely. So, like I said, last time we had you on, um, we were discussing about Prime Wrestling and how you were burnt out on running a company and and booking and whatnot. And now we're we're several. Geez, when did you start this? Like late last year into premier championship wrestling happening up there in Cleveland. I've been seeing some of the footage from it. Of course, it's over on our affiliate, IndieWrestling.us. And you got this waterway wrestling thing. What brought you back to the table to to be behind another wrestling company in this, in this vein? And, and Cleveland. It's always Cleveland with you. You know what? Cleveland's been very supportive of me. And I know that's really unpopular to say, being a Pittsburgh guy, but... Uh, Cleveland has given me so many opportunities through the years, dating back to the late, great JT Lightning, and then, of course, on to PWO, which morphed into Prime Wrestling, and uh, on to today. And you you hit it on the head. Uh, I was very burnt out. Our last Prime event uh, was October 20th, 2013. And I was financially strapped. I was mentally strapped. I was emotionally strapped. I was tired. I was burnt out. I was doing three or four different high pressure jobs at once for that company. And it, uh, it weighed on me. I didn't have the support and the infrastructure that I would have liked. And, uh, when that dissipated, it, fell on my shoulders. Um, and I was out for a good couple of years and I received an email from somebody named Danny who used to attend my prime wrestling events as a fan. And, uh, he was interested in doing something with me. Um, there were discussions at one point of reviving the prime wrestling brand, which, I don't think would have worked. I wasn't a big fan of it because it just would have been different. You would have had different talent, different production, different feel, different style. Wouldn't have been a television outlet. Wouldn't have been an eye pay per view outlet. Uh, Johnny Gargano has obviously moved on. M Dog Matt Cross has largely moved on. So it wouldn't have been the same. But I was all for attempting something new. 
And um, I made it very clear I wanted to, if I was going to do this, I wanted to run the wrestling operations. I didn't want to be involved in business. I don't want to be involved in money. I don't want to be involved in local promotion. I wanted to be able to create. I wanted to be able to work with young talent, help cultivate them, and um, just help present independent talent in a smart and productive way that uh, fans can be invested in and the talent can can grow and develop from as well. And We did one show in 2015 that was kind of a hodgepodge of some good and some bad from a, bu- from a business standpoint, from an in-ring standpoint, I think everybody delivered. Um, took a while to regroup and refocus, but we came back at Turner's Hall, which is a very famous venue in Cleveland, Ohio. It's the venue that Johnny Gargano learned how to wrestle. M-Dog, Tony Matt Cross, Josh Prohibition, they all trained in the basement there, Gregory Iron, and a number of others. Um, AIW had run there, JT Lightning had run there with Cleveland All Pro Wrestling, and now it's the home of Premier Championship Wrestling. We've been running shows monthly since August of 2016, and um, a lot different field than Prime Wrestling. Uh, 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 much like when Prime was PWO, it was a very humble grassroots beginning. Um, but I'm happy to say we've grown a little bit every single month, and while there's always stresses to the job, by and large, I've enjoyed what I'm doing because I've been able to get back out there in an administrative capacity and see who the, the latest crop of young guys are and who's just starting to heat up and who's starting to get attention and just who's out there. And um, it's been really fun to be able to uh, try to build something that's your own and create something again. And uh, so far, so good. And I hope it has a prosperous future. I always enjoy these because, uh, you know, seeing seeing the cards and, and seeing the videos come across. We were just looking at on the video version of this. Um, uh, Chris LaRusso, a longtime friend of the show against Ophidian, uh, of course, of uh, most would know from Chikara Pro. Um, I always enjoy shows like this to pop up and, and previously in the past, like something like v- Vicious Outcast Wrestling that. You know, a lot of guys we know, obviously, you know, we, we work in the same circles. So we see a Chris LaRusso's and Andrew Palaces and stuff uh, mix it up with people we don't see here in the P- Pittsburgh area or with certain companies in the Pittsburgh area that they, they also run with. Um, so it, it's it's, you know, when you get to put the, together a show like this in a different kind of area, does this, uh, you know, is this kind of like a a, 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 a I want to say you have this wish list, I guess, of people to work with, obviously, right? To an extent, I mean, I have my ideas of who from this area has the most potential and promise and who from this area um, maybe I have the most chemistry with in a working environment and who from this area can can fill a variety of other roles, who from this area is just coming up but has something special to offer, who has uh, a unique presence about them, who can stand out. And that's the one thing I've never wanted to produce is an event where everybody feels the same and every match is the same. I want uh, everybody to provide something different. And I think if you look at a lot of the Pittsburgh guys I've used, um, you could put them together and make kind of a dream card. I've used a lot of Cleveland guys. I've used guys from New York, from Michigan, from Indiana, um, both sides of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, uh, North Carolina. Um, have I had any Canadians yet? No, but there have been talks. Um, so, I mean, to be able to bring people from all over the, the, the uh, surrounding states and be able to have somebody come up to you, whether they're in the business or whether they're a fan, and say, you know what? Your shows don't feel like any other shows in the area. They're different because of the guys you use, because of the way you structure the shows, because of the way you present them. Um but yeah, there's so much young talent up there and and, and down here and, and all over in the business that just needs that right platform and needs that right shove forward. And I don't take credit for anybody's success, but I've loved being able to just take somebody and maybe turn them 20 degrees to the left and just push them forward. And now they get it. Now they know who and what they are and how they can best realize the potential that they have a lot of promoters just say okay uh you're wrestling this guy go out there have fun do your best yeah and it it, it doesn't 
you, 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 you give people freedom, but you give people so much freedom where they don't learn, and they don't have a direction, and they don't have a goal to be attained. And then you're just watching wrestling for the sake of wrestling instead of watching the drama and the story that really is the essence of what we do. And, hey, I'm not perfect. I don't bat a thousand. I've put some stinkers out there over the past 10 years. I'm not going to say I haven't, but I love being able to, to put those guys out there and seeing them succeed or fail. And if they succeed, great. And if they fail, how do we do better next time? Mm-hmm. Uh, and even dug up Bobby Beverly from Looks of Things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I He was actually living in a cave at the time. Oh, it looks um, like it. It's a, it's a fun haircut he's got. I, we <laughs> Hadn't, hadn't uh, shaved or been to a proper barber in months. Uh, we had to, we had to kind of dust him off we had the old uh, archaeologist dusters to make sure we didn't harm him he can be fragile sometimes Sorry. gotta poke um, fun at no. bobby i mean we, we we've both done a, a car trip or, or two with him and uh, uh and... I, I love the bev i can't say anything bad about the bev and he's one of those guys he was one of those first first guys that that was that came to me very raw untested unproven fresh out of training school mm-hmm. and between he and i he's the talent me as the producer we had to figure out who and what Bobby Beverly is, and mm-hmm. he figured it out before I did. And it and it was ironic because I tried to resist it at first, but then I realized what his comfort level and his comfort zone was. And I thought he had a great run. I thought if Prime Wrestling had continued a number uh, another year or two, he'd have been a guy you'd have seen consistently in the main events. Certainly, uh, we are we are getting a little bit of uh, a response on Twitter actually tonight as we're we're, we're uh, saying this uh, this uh, interview out. Over there, uh, a guy you may know, he's going to be actually on this show in a, a couple of weeks here. Uh, Magnum CK of the Mega Plowers is Magnum out there. Magnum if you will, baby. Well, he wants, uh, he says, uh, make Joe yell like Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> That's not very indie, but uh, <laughs> brother Kevin Sullivan of the Army of Darkness has seen the great Habuda Dean. He's been to the top of the Himalayas and spoken to the White Bengal Tiger. And he's told me, Dusty Rhodes, you must leave Florida forever. I was going to respond. I, I can never not do that when the Mega Plow is around. I'm forbidden from using my own voice. <laughs> I have to do everything, everything like Kevin Sullivan, brother. That's great. It's okay as long as I'm not commentating. Yeah. When you're commentating, and then you got to do it a little rough on the throat. Yeah. Yeah. Especially after a long, with a long show ahead of you, that's probably not the best. Um. So, uh, uh, PCW, you've been running at it for a while. Um, and of course, you got a big project coming up here. Um, you know, what's kind of uh, surprised you so far? Is there anything? What What's the big advantage of of I guess hindsight going into a project like this um learning from your mistakes really the pwo and prime was really my first major position running something mm-hmm. and i had some good i had some not so good i was never a fan of the length of the live prime events but i knew it was a necessary evil to get the television content that we needed mm-hmm. um we were always playing to a different crowd in Prime because we traveled around. So this time I have a more contained audience where I can do month to month uh, uh, presentation and go out in the ring and say, hey, guys, hope you're enjoying yourselves. Here's half the card for next month. Get your tickets now um, and, and keep the shows tight, quick moving and. Um, at a good pace, not too fast. They can't digest it, but not so slow. There's dead air or they feel like they're there for, for a long, long time. Um, and again, something for everybody. You'll have your smaller guys, which are turning into being branded as the welterweight. You're going to have your bigger guys like a Ricky Shane page or a Magnum CK, or you're going to have your brawlers like a, a gory or crimson or a J rock. And you're going to have your young talent coming up that are, just beginning to hit that cusp like Sonny Vice or the Koger brothers. And you've got over the top personalities like Andrew Palos and Gannon Jones Jr. And uh, Remy LaVey has really come into his own. Um, so, and it comes with the territory too, is having 
a lot of young talent, but also having leaders, having veterans, having uh, the right talent that, that know how to mentor and know the rights and wrongs. I'm only going to be able to tell you so much about what you do bell to bell, but with the right talent in the back to kind of help a uh, 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 lead impressionable young talent that don't quite get it yet. That's a big thing too. So um, I'm just trying to cover all facets and I love the fact that my job is just to produce a great wrestling show. Mm-hmm. I don't have TV deadlines. I don't have people from outside the business telling me what I should do or who I should book. I don't have people from the business side trying to dictate what I should or shouldn't do. Suggestions, obviously welcome. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, my job is to do what I think is best for the product and um, really loving the chance to do that. Every fan that comes to the shows, by and large, leaves happy. The talent's very happy. Um, the staff's very happy. So I think every show we get just a – little bit better just a quarter step forward and hopefully that'll keep coming for a long time to come hey joe uh from a production standpoint what do you find as uh the most challenging thing to do seeing that you're dealing with uh talent from like you said multiple states uh bringing them in trying to get them on a consistent basis month to month scheduling is incredibly difficult not just because the talent schedules, but my own schedule. And we recently started running Saturdays consistently. Welterweight wrestling will actually be our uh, final Sunday event for at least the immediate future. Uh, We're moving strictly to Saturdays, which is a challenge for me because from July to December uh, 2016, there wasn't a weekend I wasn't on the road. And even this year, I've had maybe two weekends off tops. So making sure uh, uh, I can be there, the talent can be there, it's really a a fine line to balance. And the roster is at a point where there's enough guys. There are probably, I'm going to say, 30 to 40 guys in the database that, that get used in and out where I can cycle talent as needed and I can cycle stories. Um, if something happens in the month of March, doesn't need to be followed up on in April. We can always say, you know what? In April, we can come out and say that that match is going to happen in May. Um, production in a camera sense is tougher because I have less resources. I don't have the full HD camera crew I did in the TV days. Uh, most of our events are one camera shoot. Um, they're they're very bare bones and maybe a little primitive, but again, we're growing and we're building. And you don't want to get too big uh, for your own good. Um, so sometimes, I mean, we just had an eight man tag street fight last weekend, and shooting everything at once is impossible. So it, it involves a lot of instincts and, and just feel it out. Um, but uh, luckily, we've been able to have a core group of talent and, and production that uh, more often than not is available. There's a few iffy situations. Jason Kincaid, obviously, signing with Evolve a couple of months ago. I'm very proud of him. But that limits his schedule a little bit. Ricky Shane Page, a lot with CZW. He goes to Canada a lot. He's a, 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 a in-demand commodity as well. But I don't think our company is such that um, – any one guy lost is um, a crippling incident. I think we have uh, interesting and compelling personalities up and down the card. And uh, again, if you're a fan of wrestling in Pennsylvania or Ohio, or just in general, sample one of the shows, because I think uh, I'm not saying we're reinventing the wheel. I'm not saying that we're going to turn into the biggest thing overnight, Um, but I'm saying what we do have to me is very entertaining. It can hold your attention and it doesn't have a lot of the, let's say less scrupulous things. Some indie promotions have. Of course. So let's get into the, 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 the big news for this interview. Of course, Waterweight wrestling coming up here um, next month on, uh, it's right in front of me, May 7th, uh, of course, fight TV and uh, up there in Cleveland. So, so tell me about the, you know, how did we come to this concept? 
It was a few different things. It was me watching the Cruiserweight Classic and being inspired. It was me watching the UK tournament and being inspired as far as well, what other niches are out there that aren't being covered by a major wrestling company or even an independent wrestling company right now. Mm-hmm. It was me watching 205 Live and questioning why there's a cruiserweight division in 2017 when the 205-pound guys aren't much smaller than Seth Rollins or AJ Styles, and they really have a similar style to begin with. To me, the cruiserweights worked in WCW because Rey Mysterio, Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero – they worked amongst themselves, they wrestled amongst themselves, and they brought you something you were not getting elsewhere on the card. Uh, they weren't going to work with Roddy Piper and Kevin Nash and Bill Goldberg. That wouldn't have been practical. So you got yin and yang. You got two completely different things. And I think that's kind of lost in this day and age where everybody's such a melting pot of styles amongst each other. And I think that's hurt the X Division as well in impact. I think this... Uh, uh, generation or this year this decade's version of the undersized stars that deserve a shop but don't have a home are a weight class smaller and that's why i wanted to create the welterweights the cruiserweights have a home and they deserve it i'm a huge fan of all of them but you know a perfect example somebody who you know very well and i'm sure has been spotlighted on this show a lot over the years but a guy like jason glory who's 170, 175 pounds, pound for pound, an amazing wrestler, incredible athlete, knows how to maneuver his body, use it as an offensive weapon, compelling, intimidating persona. And as ironic as it is, I compare Gory to Kevin Sullivan, who I talked about earlier, because Sullivan at 5'8 in 1981 was the smallest guy on the show, but he was still badass that intimidated anybody. And you could believe him in the ring against six foot eight, seven or eight blackjack mulligan. Uh, Gory is to me, 2017's Kevin Sullivan, where he can work and perform and compete in a way that you shouldn't buy it, but you do. Um, but you, you put him next to the average ring of honor star impact star, WWE star. And the discrepancy is very obvious. And there might be a credibility issue there in the eyes of some, but with an audience like DCWs or welterweights or independent company, I think that audience is passionate enough where they can see Gory for what he is and realize that size ain't all that anymore, man. The two biggest MMA draws in the past or two biggest pay-per-view draws in the past five or 10 years have been uh, Ronda Rousey and money Mayweather. And neither of them are known for hulking size. So um, that coupled with the fact, I just look at so many talents, <coughs> excuse me, on Facebook or Twitter that have this groundswell of organic fan support. Dylan Bostic with 230,000 Twitter followers, you know, uh, Ace Perry, who I could upload a match of his from PCW and it'll get 10 times the views of the other PCW matches. Um, Kevin Bennett, who's got a big following, not just in wrestling, but in hip hop. Uh, Sammy Guevara, who you know well, who's who's starting to blow up down in Texas and in Evolve, and uh, I, I saw that glance, uh, and 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 uh, you know all across the country is flying around. So uh, guys like that have this groundswell of support, but nobody's really getting all these underground hits and these wrestling's best kept secrets and this oh you're the best worker on the show but you're too small to be taken seriously up on the top of the card nobody's putting them all in one place and seeing just what the heck happens and that's what i want to do on may 7th welterweight wrestling and i've got you know this isn't just a, a generic flippy dippy show i've got different styles i got different personalities different walks of life different backgrounds putting them all together and Let's see what happens. Let's have a war of attrition and go through 16 welterweights in a survival of the fittest environment and see which one's left standing at the end. And let's see uh, if their fans come out and support them in droves. And let's see if we can create something here. Let's see if we can kind of revolutionize this part of the business where, okay, you're either a cruiserweight or a heavyweight. Well, there's more to it than that. There's whatever there is, 6, 10, 12 weight classes in boxing and MMA. Why can't 170, 180 pounders have a home? And that's what I want to do with welterweight wrestling. It's fresh. It's new. And, I mean, 
80 percent of my roster is 25 years old or under. These are hungry young guys looking for a shot. And uh, I think a lot of them are going to go all out to make sure they stand out the most coming up on May 7th. Absolutely. And of course, uh, you know, it's going to be on Fight TV, uh, IP review again, first time you've done IP review for a while uh, for your promotion. Um, yeah. So you, the, you know, I think that's another discussion. I know we have this discussion a lot uh, about all these platforms out there. Uh, you know, obviously we're, we're kind of, uh, supporting, uh, fight TV and vice versa with, with, uh, our promotions on the wrestling mayhem show. And there's others out there like, like your flow slams and, and, and just stuff popping up all over. We're trying to do a platform ourselves on any wrestling.us, of course. Um, is this, you know, you, it's interesting is you have an opportunity to put this on a platform, like, like that seems to be developing and growing on a fight TV. Yeah. Fight has been a great partner for me in terms of, uh, uh, some of the archive material as far as the prime library and some of the documentaries, much like high spots and smart mark video and, and a number of others. And, uh, fight's been great so far. Fight has a great relationship also with Mike Moran, who will be my live director. He did all of my, uh, well, not all of, he did, uh, a couple of years of my television, the best years of my television. And, uh, he'll be directing this event, three camera, full HD shoot, Mm -hmm. um so it's going to be a pretty big presentation he's got Um, i've worked with mike on on several projects uh with prime wrestling and such and and he's got a killer setup he's been doing mma uh constantly upgrading too. doing mma every weekend one of the most experienced combat sports directors in the game oh absolutely absolutely he's the top notch uh recommend him for anybody looking for 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 somebody to go his travel he's going everywhere He's, oh my god! Crazy. Yeah, he's he's all over the country. I think but he, back he, to fight. He he travels. Yeah. He travels more than some pro wrestlers. He travels more than most pro wrestlers. Yeah, he'll do true. the drives. He'll do the drive straight through Cleveland yeah. to Texas, Cleveland to St. Louis. He don't care. Um, he's a machine, and that's why he's the only person uh, uh, that I would trust right now for a live eye pay per view. Oh, absolutely, wrestling wise, because his instincts are insane. His equipment, he's always upgrading. I don't even know what he uses now. I mean, mm-hmm. he's, he's always talking about buying lights, buying cameras, buying uh, a whole bunch of stuff for his production truck. But, and, and I think that's why the marriage with fight is going to be so key and it's going to be uh, 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 so successful is that not only are we going to have such a slick presentation, but I think the key to welterweight wrestling is, uh, the online market, it's DVD, it's VOD, it's MP4 and it's I pay per view. Um, I think we'll have, I think we'll have a, a good crowd, maybe a great crowd live in Cleveland. Um, love the fans up there. Crowds are slowly growing, but, um, I'm looking beyond that as well. I think they're going to be a great, great base to build this around, but also I know there's people all over the world talking about this and, I think it's it's those fans' passion, and again, the passion of the fans of each individual welterweight we have, that's really going to determine what the future is for this thing. Um, this is not going to be a monthly event at this time. Um, this is going to be something we're going to do one, and we're going to see how it grows. Um, there will be more, without a doubt. I can almost guarantee there will be more. I can guarantee there will be more. But um, I want to view this more as a special than as a recurring regular thing at this point. Maybe we'll do one later in the year. Maybe we'll do one next year. Maybe we'll do two later in the year. Maybe the market will dictate what we're going to do. Um, but this is just chapter one. I'm not the type that's going to pour my life savings into one event and sink or swim. It's not the type that's, okay, I have to run every three, four, six weeks for this to work. I don't because this is something I want to nurture and I want to uh, cultivate properly. And I'm very happy with who I have on board. I specifically uh, did this on a Sunday so I could have a better choice of getting both production and talent and everything that, that I want to get. Shane Douglas is my color commentator um, and things of that nature. So um, this is just the beginning. And I don't know where it can go from here. But if the people are with it, then... By God, I would love to take this on the road and do the old local territory promoter system and bring welterweight wrestling to Cleveland, to Pittsburgh, to Toledo, to wherever would host it. Um, Because I think we have something that has appeal beyond just one geographic region. 
Certainly, certainly. So uh, check it out. Uh, there's a list of everybody involved. Uh, a lot of great names in there. Like I said, Gory, Dylan Bostic. Uh, I- interesting, the, 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 the idea of Shane Douglas calling a Walter White show. You know what? I'd like to point out there will be no weight limit on the announce table <laughs> because <laughs> both me and Shane would flunk. Yeah, I yeah. have we- not seen the welterweight class in about 30 pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what? I wanted Shane because he would be very opinionated. He's a name everybody knows. He's mm-hmm. in your face. He will call it like he sees it. He knows great wrestling and he knows not great wrestling. And he knows a little bit of something about winning a championship for the first time and revolutionizing a business. So what better person to hand present the beautiful welterweight title to whomever wins than uh, than Shane Douglas. And maybe we can usher in the era of the welterweights like Shane did the era of the extreme. There you go. There you go. Sounds like it's going to be a good time. Definitely recommend everybody checking it out uh, either in person or online. Again, where can people check out more? You can check out, uh, of course, the Fight app itself. We have a direct link. We have an, uh, it embedded on welterweightwrestling.com. You can buy the uh, event on Fight once. You get unlimited lifetime replays. That's a hell of a deal. Uh, and, of course, facebook.com slash welterweightwrestling, at welterweightpw on Twitter, welterweightwrestling on Instagram as well. Uh, we have two matches. Well, technically three matches now. So far, we have Dylan Bostic and Ryan Kidd in a qualifier. We have the Battle of the Aces, Ace Austin and Ace Perry in a qualifier. And we also have the main event, which is going to be question mark versus 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 question mark. Seven-way elimination championship scramble. All the winners of the qualifiers will move on in a survival the fittest type format for an elimination match at the end of the night and uh, full three hour event, three camera HD production from the historic Turner's hall. And uh, I hope you guys check it out because I think at least one person's career is going to change forever on this night. And I hope it's mine in a good way. I'm not sure. <laughs> And running from Joe wins the belt. Uh, that was, <laughs> didn't say what all the question marks were coming from. So uh, there you go. All hey, right. me and Shane could get into that sauna. We could still qualify. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joe Dombrowski, longtime friend of the show uh, and the uh, and, and, and indie wrestling and, and all that. Thank you so much uh, for chatting with us about your new project. Looking forward to see how it turns out and uh, hopefully get myself up there in Cleveland to see you in person as well. Thank you, Chad, for hanging out with us tonight. Hey, no problem. Thanks there for having you me. Go. And uh, of course, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This and other past interviews, including recent ones with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, of all people, and future ones coming up with uh, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Ken Anderson. Anderson. Uh, Anderson. A- Anderson. Anderson. Uh, we had a great conversation with him about uh, about his wrestling school and everything out in Minnesota. Nice. So uh, check that out in the future. And of course, Magnum CK, who who interjected himself on Twitter tonight, will be joining us as well in the near future on the show. So stay tuned. Tons in the can. Tons coming up. Tons of interviews. Tons of past interviews. Check out the first time Jock Sampson uh, said something interesting on a podcast with us all the way back in episode three to get you ready for him saying something interesting in about three episodes. Uh, so much more. Thank you so much, everybody. And in the meantime, support indie wrestling. We'll see you guys next time. Sink, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wow, steady sip and check now This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com